Ciao, friends! Today we're going to talk about the switch function in DAX again. Yes, in a previous article and video, we already described the optimization made by the engine by executing the switch function. And this is particularly important when you want to read in a function, in a measure, the value selected in a slicer, and depending on the selection, you want to apply a different behavior to your measure. It could be a parameter, it could be the selection of a different measure to display, it could be anything. Now, we have seen in the previous article and video that there are a few important notes. In order to get the best execution plan, we have to read exactly the column displayed. In a way, this is a limitation because, of course, we have to actually write in the code the very same content displayed in the slicer. But actually, we have an option we have the option of using the group by columns property in order to uh, force, to convince Power BI to filter a hidden column so that the execution plan will be optimal if we read that hidden column in our code, in our measure, in the switch function. This can increase the uh, flexibility we have in order to get the best uh, execution plan without having to write in the code the very same value displayed in the slicer. That value could change because of translations, because of changes requested by the user. It doesn't matter. We want to use uh, simpler codes or just numbers to identify the different options to make our code mode resilient to changes that we apply to the report, for example. Unfortunately, we will see that there is some limitation. The feature the group by columns feature that we also described in a previous article and video is uh, not available in Excel, which means that uh, Excel cannot take advantage of this optimization and still has to use other columns, forcing you to be creative if you want to support the two environments. But in case you mainly want to support Power BI, this is an option that could make it easier to write and maintain the code, uh, keeping the good performances. So let's start with the demo. So let's quickly review how the switch optimization works uh, in DAX uh, using some Power BI reports to show the different execution plans. So the model we used is a model where we have this slicer measure, which has a list of strings that we stored in the options table that we have uh, in the model. This options table doesn't have any relationship with other tables of the model and the content is just made by two columns. The index represents the position of the string in the list of the options, and name is just the name that we want to select. In this example, we have a measure, selected name, which depending on the selection made in options name, displays a different measure. We know that the field parameter is another option to obtain the same result, but the goal is to understand what happens in the query plan when we use switch, which could be used to inject a parameter in a, in a complex calculation, and that would not be possible with the field parameters. Just for educational purposes, we use the, this simple example. So based on the selection on option of options name, we could have three different measures executed. And sales amount only consumes a quantity by net price, uh, total cost consumes uh, quantity by unit cost, and margin is the difference between the two. So if I capture the execution plan of, this, uh, of the query generated for the matrix, so if I refresh the model, the, the report, and I copy the query, I can go in DAX Studio, I paste the code, this is the query sent from Power BI to the engine analysis services, and I run the query. We can see two things. We have in the server timings, we have a, a list of storage engine queries that have been executed to uh, to populate the report. Remember, we are checking the selected name, which is the same column that we are filtering directly. So the measure reads the value selected in this column. And based on this selection, we have these uh, storage engine queries that have been optimized. But more important, we have the query plan where we don't have uh, 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 the generation of the, of the possible uh, execution path for the other two measures. So remember the number, we have 85 rows in this case of the execution. 
Now, the variation we have seen is that what happens if instead of using the name, the, the, the name displayed in the, in the slicer, we use the index. Because, for example, we want to create a business logic in our measure where we don't rely on the exact name displayed because maybe that the name could be translated or changed based on some other configuration. So if we look at the measure used in this second example, uh, let's go to selected index, which is uh, the measure used uh, in the matrix. The only difference is that we use selected values on uh, options index and we uh, check the number, the position of the row. It could be uh, a, a string, uh, an acronym, something else, not the, the string displayed. Because we know that this uh, table has uh, uh, one row for each value and the, the rows are unique, we know that uh, the result will be the same. Indeed, the, the result is the same. But if we look at the, uh, at the result of the query plan, so we repeat the same operation capturing the query for the matrix and we execute this here, run again, we see that there are a few differences. Uh, first of all, there is an additional, there is one additional query in the storage engine queries, this one. But the more important thing is that if we look at the query plan, we have a much, much, much longer query plan. What does it mean? Even though the storage engine queries have not been generated to retrieve the uh, total cost and the margin, in reality, the corresponding query plan, the formula engine query plan, has been developed, has been generated, and you pay a price for that. So basically, even though it is not, exec it is not executed storage engine queries, we still have a price to pay in terms of generation of and execution of the query plan. This can result in slower performance, as we have seen in the switch statement. So the, goal, the, the best practice is, and I'll go back to Power BI, in the measure, use the same value that you display. So if we decide that in the slicer we want to display the options name, use the options name in the selected value. Now, the purpose of this uh, video is to see an alternative where we can actually use uh, the options index, but without paying the penalty price that we have seen happens in a regular condition without pay paying the penalty price for the formula engine, because we have seen that the storage engine does not execute additional queries, but we still have to pay a price for the, for the formula engine. So here we have another article, another technique that comes to the rescue. So first of all, this is the article that describes in detail, the article in the video describes in detail, the optimization of the switch statement. And we recently published another article about the group by columns property that we have in the Tabula model. This article describes in detail what you can and not cannot do. For example, a big limitation of this approach is that it is not compatible with Excel, with MDX queries. But for Power BI, this gives us an option, which is that we can say, we can ask the Power BI to store the selection made in a slicer, not by using the, uh, the displayed name, but by using the group by columns that have been specified for that property. Let's see how this works and what is the benefit we can achieve using this technique for our scenario. So I prepared uh, a copy of uh, the options table. So you see that there is an options group by table, which is uh, absolutely the, uh, the identical content. If we look at the content of this table, we have exactly the same content. Index name, three rows, uh, and so on. In terms of Power BI definition, this model is identical. The difference is in uh, the tabular model. So if we open tabular editor, which I have here, we have the property name for, the, sorry, in the name column we set the group by columns property, which we see here, specify one column. By default, this property group by columns has zero columns assigned. So what we did is that we went here and we selected the other column, the group by, as a column to group by. So we have a situation where we have the sort by column like we had before, but we also define the group by columns. Once this setting is in place, what happens? We can take a look at the Let's go back to Power BI. We can take a look at what happens in the report. So now we go in this demo fast index where we have 
in the slicer we used the name column from the options group by table so this is the name column where we apply the groups by column this is the first thing we did the second thing we did is that we um, we, we have the selection we go in optimize or oh, before looking at that the second thing we did is the selected index optimize measure is using the options group by index so now we are trying to execute um, the code using an approach that should generate we have seen before 400 uh, rows of formula engine uh, query plan so that is what we expect because we are using the same but the only difference is that now we applied group by column so let's see what happens in the code generated by power bi so we go in optimize performance analyzer we refresh the visual and we copy the matrix code the the query generated to populate the matrix we paste this code into uh, Duck Studio, and first of all, we look at the first line here. Look at that. We selected the um, name column. Nevertheless, the filter has been applied to the index column. So because group by columns has been applied to the column name, then Power BI no longer stores the name as the result of the selection, but stores the list of the columns that have been applied to group by columns and because we only selected the index only index is selected we might include both index and name but by including only index we obtain another benefit this um, selection is also the selection that is applied to the report if you say the pbx file so let's assume that you load this uh, report later and in the meantime the underlying data changes and the name sales amount is different there is a translation or it has been simply renamed the report will still continue to select whatever you have with the line one with the index one which means that this could be a way to have the same version of the report that can be used with different translations because the selection is uh, the same across any translation so this is uh, the first benefit but we want to look at the performance and what happens now that we are selecting index remember the selection is made on index from the DAX perspective my measure selected index optimized let's take a look again my measure is using selected value group by index so we are reading the same column that has been filtering DAX so what we expect is that once we go back to DAX studio and we execute the query we should see that the query plan now has the same shorter number of rows like the optimal condition we have seen at the beginning so we optimize not only the storage engine queries this was uh, similar to what we have seen before but more important we optimize the formula engine execution the query plan which means that in complex models this could make a huge difference for example, imagine you have a model where you see that the impact of the switch statement is huge. Of course, you could rewrite the code of your measures and making sure that the selected value no longer checks the index column and check the name column. Or you could just change the model, use the group by columns, and all of a sudden you solve the performance issue of the existing reports. Of course, the price to pay is that you lose the compatibility with Excel. So it's a hard choice, I understand. It's not easy to do. Um, one idea we had is that we can uh, hide the, the, the columns that we don't use for, for, for this purpose. For example, index is certainly a column that we try to hide, but we don't have a good solution for Excel other than exposing additional columns and instructing the user so that they should use the columns for Excel instead of the columns for for power bi I don't, I don't have a good solution as of today but it's good to know that we can apply this kind of optimization to your report that uh, gives more flexibility in the way the data is also persisted in the selections made in the report once they are saved and of course it could uh, provide a benefit for the uh, performances without relying on the visible name that sometimes is not what you want to do in your formulas so we have seen that we can actually get good performances when we use the switch function reading the value of a hidden column.
we have to use the group by columns feature. Unfortunately, this feature is not compatible with Excel or in general with MDX queries. So we can use this approach when we want to keep in the DAX code numbers or acronyms that are different from the displayed values because this could make the code easier to maintain in the future because if you change uh, the description uh, for a translation or for a design change request that's not a problem the user interface is separate from the business logic of the measure but of course you have to find a solution for excel it could be using other columns using other measures you should educate the user for that i know it's not optimal but this is what you have uh, at the moment so as long as we don't have support for MDX and Excel, this is a solution that can be evaluated if your user base is mainly made by Power BI user. As usual, enjoy DAX! <laughs>